Hey everyone, uh, Thomas Harrington here again. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm just gonna be doing a video uh, explaining a few different places where you may wanna live uh, in West Edmonton and just kind of uh, showing you a few different communities, just kind of explaining um, what you can get and where and helping you get to know the area. So today I'm focused on West Edmonton. You should be able to see my face and then as well as my screen here. So today we're talking about West Edmonton. You can see it highlighted on the map here. Um, so West Edmonton, um, as you can see from a map, you know, the, the city, uh, the, the river cuts it in half diagonally here. And then uh, we kind of have our ring road, uh, the Anthony Hende, which is relatively symmetrical and circles the whole city here um and then so for the west end um we go from uh the most north part generally speaking is uh 111th ave here it runs right up to 124th street which is uh kind of the edge of downtown goes down the river and then goes as far south down here we have some of the new communities uh like stillwater etc uh you have lewis estate seacourt etc up here now uh basically the hende uh so anything west of the hende is considered like new west end and then as you go closer into the core uh things get a little more older but generally those areas are a little more established and more transit amenities etc so the first community I'm going to be talking about here today is Secord, which as you can see is fairly far west, uh, a newer community here in the West End, um, pretty new, uh, many, many brand new homes. And then I'll kind of work my way in. One other thing we're going to do is, so it's not just maps and numbers, um, we're going to have some footage cut in of a few of these areas, just so you can kind of get a little bit of a vibe or a feel for them, kind of see what's where, what it looks like, etc. And uh, so it's not just me talking at you, we should be seeing some footage of these communities as well. So uh, it's uh, south of the Yellowhead, this is our main highway, uh, 16A and Highway 16, which go west to spruce grove jasper etc you have the hende over here so this is secord it's actually a fairly large area um, which is why i picked it there's been a lot of homes sold in the last few years just because it's a newer area lots of activity so when it comes to secord the average detached price was um 442,970 so 440,000 pretty consistent with the edmonton average now um, the median price as well was 438000 So I'm going to talk about the median price because median, just to give you a quick math lesson, median means the middle number. So that means 50% of the homes are um, below that number. So just for reference, you know, sometimes average price and median price will, will change a little bit. So uh, when it comes to C-Cord, you know, a large portion of the homes are going to be in the $380,000 to $440,000 range. Um, in this area, you know, the four fifty dollars to 500000 is going to be a little more of what I'd call it like an executive price point. Um, and only 15% of the homes sold in the area were over 500,000. So a lot of the activity is below 500, kind of that mid to low 400s range is where you're gonna see a lot of the activity in this area for detached homes. Now, when it comes to the average age of a home in Secord, majority of the homes moving in the area are 2016 or newer uh, with tons of brand new options. Like I said, they're still building out this area. The oldest you'll find in Secord is about a 2009, 2010 built home. Uh, those were some of the first homes in that area uh, 9, 10, 11. Most of them are a little bit newer than that. Just to bring it in a little closer here. So uh, you come in, this is kind of the main entrance on Secord Boulevard. And basically this west part of Secord here is the newer part. And then kind of this like cross section here, this side of it here is a little more new and established. Um, and then the closer you get to 215th Street here, uh, those are be the older ones. Like I said, about 10 years old is about the oldest you'll find in the area. Now, when it comes to the amenities in this area, um, there's actually quite a few, despite being such a new community. There's a lot of very well established uh, shopping and convenience and retail items in the West End here. So if you're living in Secord here, your main shopping center is going to be here at the corner of Winterburn Road and Weber Greens Drive. Um, 
the, the map doesn't quite do it justice, but there's a huge shopping center here uh, with like a save on foods. Uh, the Canadian brew house is one of their anchor tenants here as well. Very cool brew house, excellent place to hang out in the West End. They have an excellent patio. Um, you'll see a lot of, if you're moving to Edmonton, you're going to see a lot of Canadian brew houses around. Uh, this is one of the good ones. Uh, as well in the West End, the West End is really great just because out here in this west part of the city you have the lewis estates golf course which you can actually see is this green section of land all the way here uh this west end area the first part or, or the older parts of this area were um originally built around this golf course like breckenridge greens weber greens here this is kind of the area called lewis estates this were built more uh late 90s early 2000s kind of thing but this is kind of the main tenant to the west end there's quite a few new schools as well in this area so if you're living in secord you will still have a few options for schools there's actually a decent amount of walking trails and stuff when you look at secord here you can see here i'm just gonna close this when you look at Seacord here, you can see there's a few man-made lakes in Seacord. Uh, there's actually some nice natural area in there that they've built. Uh, there's some trails that connects it all. It's a pretty pleasant place to go for a walk, bike ride. And one thing uh, you'll find is as you get to know local Edmontonians or if you, you know anyone, they'll basically refer to this West Hende area as Lewis Estates. Uh, there technically is no community called Lewis Estates, but that's what this area is kind of generally vaguely called. Getting back to it, another great amenity you have in the West End is Costco's. There's a brand new Costco in the West End here. Uh, super convenient. It's definitely very busy, but an excellent thing to have. Uh, a unique thing we also have in Edmonton is the River Cree Resort and Casino right here, which is close by. Uh, hotel, casino, entertainment, there's hockey there. Um, you have the twin rings, so there's hockey leagues. Up at the casino, they do some concerts there and stuff. Uh, again, you know, full disclosure, this is in COVID times, so uh, it's closed at the moment, but uh, that will definitely come back. So when you look at this West End as a whole, you know, if you're living in Seacord, you actually have a ton of amenities to you, uh, available to you. Uh, it's a great new community. There's a lot of options there. So if you're looking for something new or newer, uh, you can get in Seacord and then you're still going to have quite a few amenities. Sometimes, you know, in cities, Edmonton included, uh, when you go to a new community, uh, you know, you're a 10, 12, 15 minute drive from the grocery store. This is definitely not the case in Seacord. So a great new, uh, great option in the West End. Now, one thing I'm going to talk about is the drive times of areas here. So, for reference, if you're new to Edmonton, uh, for Secord to get to West Edmonton Mall, you can add about a 10 to 12 minute drive time here, uh, just for reference. So, still pretty close in the West End. Now, if you're living in Secord and in most places in Edmonton, things are like a 20 minute drive almost wherever you live, especially if you're in the suburbs to get downtown, just realistically speaking, you know, end of the day, Edmonton is going to be a commuter city. Um, you're going to probably need a vehicle unless you live right downtown. But uh, yeah, so from the West End to get downtown, it's about a 24, 25 minute drive, as you can see here. There's a few different routes, uh, but you have a pretty straight shot on, it's called Stony Plain Road, this road here, and it takes you straight downtown. Another drive time, just for reference, is to the University of Alberta. Uh, the reason I'm picking U of A is just because that's kind of, you know, a main area, main reason many people come to Edmonton. And also beside U of A, we have what's called White Avenue, which is our 82nd Ave here, which you can see right here, which is kind of our entertainment and commercial district for the south side, kind of our south downtown, if you will. Uh, so for argument's sake, to drive to White Ave or U of A, it's going to be about a 20-minute drive from Secord. Now, I'll throw it in here that as of this recording, uh, our city is still working on uh, transit from the West End, from this far West End here. Um, you, you're going to be looking at um, the West LRT is expanding out to the Lewis Estates area, but that's not going to be complete for a few more years. So the next area I'm going to talk about is Limburn, which you can see right here. It's a little closer in in the West End here. A um, little bit of a hidden gem just because... Uh, there's quite a bit of turnover in this area and there's a lot of very affordable homes. There's a lot of homes uh, in the low 300,000s or even below 300,000. So I thought this was a good area to kind of look into uh, just for kind of a different price point. Uh, not brand, brand new. Um, as you can see, it's a little closer in than Secord, um, nice and close to West Edmonton Mall. So just to talk numbers for you, uh, when it comes to Limburn, the average price of a home is just over three hundred thirty thousand dollars, and the median price is three hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars. So 
Uh, what that kind of tells you is most of the homes are in the low 300s or below 300,000. Range is anywhere from 210,000 to 450,000. Being said, last year, the most expensive home sold in Limburn was a $450,000 home, which kind of shows you uh, just there's not a lot of super highly priced homes in this area. Most are floating around that mid to low 300. Um, you can still actually get a three bedroom home for under 300,000 in this area. Now, that being said, uh, at that price point, it may not have a garage or something, but you could definitely build one. Uh, just a good, really affordable community for sure. Now, there is a very good selection in the 340 to 410 region as well. Um, that's where kind of the other half of the homes are. Uh, there'll be a little more square footage, a little more updated, probably have a single or double garage as well. Now, when it comes to the average age of homes in this community, uh, the range is anywhere from 1977 all the way to 1998. There's not many that are as new as 98. Most of the homes in the area are between 1977 to 1985. So a little bit older, um, kind of at that age where we're going to want to see a decent amount of updates into some of the main items like furnace, roof, uh, windows, etc. But again, still a great uh, price point and a uh, nice location in the West End. So when it comes to the actual amenities they have to offer for you here, um, there's a couple nice parks here, uh, several schools, you know, it's a, because it's a more established community, the schools are more established. Um, you have Collingwood Park right here with twin arenas. Um, you have uh, the high school here, Romero. Um, there's uh, a big YMCA here, uh, recreation facility, fitness facility. And what we also have is this Collingwood uh, shopping center right here on this corner. Um, huge, huge shopping center, all kinds of amenities and shopping. So uh, pretty good area. As you can see, you're actually not too far from the west end of the River Valley. So if you're living in Limburg, you can actually access the River Valley from kind of this country club Westridge area over here. Uh, you would probably have to drive or bike to it to get there, but it's pretty close by, so you can still enjoy the River Valley despite being pretty far west. Now, as you can see here, um, the uh, from Limburg to West Edmonton Mall, I'm not even going to put this in the Google Maps, but your drive time is about five, six minutes. It's nice and close. West Edmonton Mall is right there. Super, super convenient for that. You're still nice and close to the white mud. You're nice and close to the handy, that ring road. Now, um, the white mud I haven't talked about yet, but white mud is one of our main freeways that connects the West End uh, to the Southeast here. You can kind of see it run along here. This thicker yellow one here. So you have pretty good transit access, uh, quite a bit of shopping, a few schools, and a very affordable price point. So I thought Limburn was a great opportunity uh, to show here today. Uh, to get from downtown, or from Limburn to downtown, uh, you're looking at about a 22 minute drive, uh, 24, 22 to 24, realistically speaking. Now, because Edmonton's West End is kind of funny, where a lot of our homes are and communities that are considered West, such as Limber and Secord Lewis Estates, when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, we're kind of Southwest, really, but we call this the West End. That being said, to get downtown, you can either cross the river and go through the South side of town, or you can go a bit North and then go East and get downtown that way. And to get to the U of A, a little bit of a straighter shot, about 15 minutes uh, to get to the south side U of A, White Ave area as well. So next community on the uh, on the docket here is Linwood, which is a really great west, more central west end community. Uh, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit for reference here. So as you can see, we're kind of getting in a little closer, a little more central, a little closer to downtown and a little away from West Edmonton Mall. Um, now, one thing I'll mention, and this goes for all the communities I'm talking about today, I've picked one specific neighborhood. A lot of the surrounding areas around these ones are going to be fairly similar. So for Linwood, and I mention this now just because this is a smaller area, there's not huge, huge turnover in Linwood every year. But, you know, you have Laurier Heights, you have Elmwood just to the west here. See if you can see that name. Elmwood, Jasper Park, Parkview Shore Road, etc. Metal Arc even. These are all going to be fairly similar communities and have the fairly similar fairly similar amenities to offer. So to talk numbers, the average price of a detached home in Linwood last year was 412,000, just over 412,000, and the median sale price was 379,000. So, um 
most and the best homes in this area are going to be between 360,000 to 450,000. Um, there are several homes under 300,000 in Linwood in some of these areas, but uh, when you see a home under 300,000, it's going to be a very old, uh, dated home, what I call smoke and original, typically a post war bungalow that, you know, very often they're in great shape. But when you get down around to 300,000 point, they're going to be pretty much completely untouched, all original or very dated uh, interior and exterior. It's going to need some updating. So it's a great area if you're someone looking to put some money in a home maybe. But those lower priced homes in this area are, are definitely going to be uh, more work just realistically speaking. Now, when it comes to the average age of the home, uh, the majority of these homes are what are kind of still considered post-war bungalows being built between 1958 to 1963. Uh, by this time, they should have had a decent amount of updates and you'll want to look for things being updated which I talked about in my other videos such as windows roof furnace um, even plumbing electrical etc not just caring about renovations but a lot of those uh, bones of the home kind of thing um, when it comes to the amenities until you get the more little hidden gems you're going to have just because you're going to have more small shopping centers which will have nice little restaurants little uh, nooks and crannies fancy little local good local neighborhood joints uh, whether it be a bar or pub or restaurant something to that effect for Linwood specifically, I mean, uh, when it comes to your shopping center, you have uh, the Meadowlark Shopping Center, which is right here. Uh, there is a there's a Brewster's, there's a Walmart, uh, there's a Safeway, London Drugs. Um, this is kind of going to be your main anchor center. Um, you're still not particularly far from West Edmonton Mall, nice and close, but you are getting a little more central. Uh, the drive to downtown is a little nicer. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, what you also have is you're nice and close down to uh, Laurier Park. Uh, down here, which is right where the Edmonton Valley Zoo is, and you also have the Buena Vista Park, which is actually the West Edmonton Dog Park, off-leash dog park. So if you're someone who has a pet, uh, West Edmonton Dog Park is nice and close to you here. Uh, you can kind of see the trails here. Um, like I've kind of mentioned it throughout this video, uh, the River Valley is still pretty accessible, and then from this Buena Vista Park, it's easy to get to Harlock Park downtown. You can kind of get to the main River Valley part, which is over here. On top of that, um, the River Valley is going to be even the Rio Park area over here. Um, Edmonton has a very famous thing called the uh, Wolf Willow Stairs. You can kind of Google it. Uh, it's a huge set of like 250 stairs, which is right around this area in the between Wolf, Wolf Willow and uh, Rio Terrace areas. These are accessible from here and then from uh linwood specifically you can kind of bike over to this part of the river valley as well so as we get a little more central the river valley becomes a little more accessible foot on bike kind of thing uh you could walk or jog to it it's not just down the street but it is relatively close a little easier to get to uh, the far west communities you don't really have easy river valley access so again like i said nice and close to west edmonton mall six minute drive literally like two turns and, and you're there kind of thing now downtown uh you're getting a little closer it's about a 15 16 minute drive uh from kind of the linwood area of the central west end so not too bad um the one thing though is just realistically speaking as you can see the way the lay of the land is in edmonton this is kind of an interesting thing is um you you uh the way the West End goes to downtown, it actually kind of funnels through one or two areas. And that's just because of how the River Valley cuts straight south here across the, and kind of cuts off the West End from getting to downtown. So once you get into more of the central west and uh, northwest-ish parts of the West End, um, you're basically forced, you can even see these routes all come to the same place. You're either going to be forced to go to Stony Plain Road, which is here, or you can head up to 107th Ave, which is up here and to get downtown that way. So um, if you're going to be a downtown commuter um, from West End, you know, you will have a little more traffic, just realistically speaking with and being perfectly honest with you. As for university, uh, very easy to get there from this part of the West End. Uh, only an 11 minute drive, uh, nice and close to White Ave. It's not too bad under 15 minutes. That's pretty good. Uh, and there's quite a bit of uh, good uh, public transit options from from the West End to, to get you down to U of A if you or someone uh, living with you is going to be a student. Um, one thing I actually haven't mentioned is the airport, which I'm just going to throw in here. Now, uh, also, um, so it is about a 25 minute to half hour drive to the airport from the West End. And 
this number is not going to change too, too much regardless of community here. See Limburn, yeah, 2732. Uh, this is also full disclosure, the traffic that I have today. So these times are going to uh, vary a little bit if there's construction or an accident today or whatever. For airport times, you know, for someone who's going to be commuting, fly in, fly out, as you can see, uh, I mean, whether you go Secord, Limburn, or uh, Linwood, uh, whether it takes you the White Mud Way and then down Calgary Trail or through the Hende, it's about half hour. That's kind of the magic number for how long it takes you to get to the airport from the West End. And that's just how far our airport is from the city, uh, realistically speaking, if you're going to be moving here. Now, the last area I'm going to talk about for today is Grosvenor. So uh, this is the most central area we're going to talk about today. Um, probably as more as central as you're going to get for a moderately affordable price point when it comes to the West End neighborhoods. So uh, just to kind of recap, just for reference, so you are nice and close to downtown. Now, we go back to the start of the video. The kind of furthest east boundary of the West End is 124th Street, which you can kind of see here. Um, it's not super well highlighted, but you can see the number there. So that's kind of the end of the West End and where downtown effectively starts. Um, so 124th Street, really great area. Tons of shopping, kind of a cool little spot. Uh, shops, cafes, they even do a farmer's market there, kind of a trendy area. Um, and then once you get past 124th Street, you're in Oliver, Queen Mary Park, and then downtown. Oliver's is effectively part of downtown, uh, at least according to most Edmontonians. But Anyways, for other communities around here that are going to be similar, you know, we have McQueen, North Glenora. Uh, these are going to be pretty similar communities. Once you get into Glenora here, Glenora is a very well-established luxury area, so uh, we're not going to see a lot of prices in the moderate to affordable price range. Um, now, the thing I want to talk about with price is that this is the first area where we're going to see a lot of infill properties. So now, Edmonton... Um, and most larger cities are seeing this is in old areas. Edmonton sees a lot of infill where someone tears down an old home and builds a brand new one. So uh, we kind of need to break down prices a bit further just because uh, there are some, you know, $800,000 million infills in this area. So it kind of skews the averages. So the price in this area is $496,000. Uh, so just under five hundred. dollars We're getting a little more expensive as we get more central. Now that's adjusted for no homes over a million dollars. The reason I did that is just because there was one or two uh, $2 million sales in the area. It kind of skewed the numbers where it just didn't really give an accurate picture. Now, conversely, when we look at the average infill, uh, the average detached infill house is just over $700,000 in Grosvenor. Um, so again, that's going to be a large brand new, probably about 2000 square foot infill. Uh, if you are in the market for that, you know, this is one of the first areas where we're going to see it in the world of infills. Um, it's moderately affordable, but I think it's important to make that distinction between infill and then kind of a normal detached house. Now, when we break this down even further, the average detached older home, uh, similar to what we saw in Linwood, is 426000 So as you can see, once we kind of break down these numbers, you know, there's still plenty of affordable homes in Grosvenor, even though the neighborhood average is about $500,000. Um, that number is skewed up a little by the infills. So when it comes to the average age of a home, the average age is 1948, so a little bit older than Linwood. Again, as we move more and more central here, and older and older homes, basically more of true post-war era bungalows. The structure and architecture will be a little different. It'll have some nice character features uh, in these homes as well, uh, if they've been well maintained. Um, but the majority, yeah, they're gonna be between 1946 to 1950, I find. Um, kind of that post-war construction boom for sure. Now, when it comes to amenities, uh, the list kind of grows and grows as we get nice and central. As you can see, you're actually right on the edge, the north edge of the McKinnon Ravine. So your steps to a ravine, you can walk to the ravine. And then this McKinnon Ravine here does connect kind of to the River Valley, Victoria area. Here, uh, you can get right downtown. You can get to the legislature um, very easily. Walterdale Bridge is over here. We've got a few golf courses close by. But yeah, this is the first one that's right on the ravine. Um, literally, you can bike all the way to the far west end, all the way to the east side of town. Um, great neighborhood to own a bike in, frankly. Here, 
uh, super, super easy access to the ravine and river valley. It's really nice. It's a local shops and cafes. Like I mentioned, 124th street, there's actually a few hidden gems within Grosvenor right on 142 here. Um, and then along Stony Plain road here in Glenora, there's a few commercial shops, which have some cool little, uh, cafes, coffee shops, shout out Vise for pies, kind of a staple of the West end for a good, uh, cheesecake and dessert place. Look them up if you're in the area. Would recommend. Uh, Victoria Golf Course, nice and close by. Uh, we have Jasper Ave, which I haven't mentioned yet, but Jasper Ave is kind of the main avenue of downtown. It's where most or a lot of the restaurants are, uh, bars, nightclubs, etc. cetera. Uh, downtown, pretty, pretty accessible. Uh, Brewery District, which is up here. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see it. Uh, so we actually have a brand new Loblaws here. There's a large Good Life Fitness up here. Um, this is the first time I get a chance to talk about it in this video. Um, you can It's kind of this yellowish color here. So you have Oliver Square and then the brewery district is this west part. Um, just a really cool new area, uh, new shops, um, entertainment, kind of the, the brewery district is effectively the northwest corner of downtown. Um, so, but uh, not too, too busy down there. Your easy access to McEwen University as well. There's a bunch of gyms. Um, there's a Royal Glen or a club just up here at the corner on 142 and 107. One of the new exciting developments about Grosvenor 2 is you have what's called West Block Lenora, which, so that video, that photo kind of shows it. Um, West Block is basically a new condo development uh, right on this corner here. Um, the new uh, construction building, you know, was under construction for many, many years in Edmonton. It had issues, but in the last three years or so, uh, new developer picked it up. It's been coming along very nicely. So there's a nice brand new area here. Tons of new shops moving in already. Uh, so pretty cool. You have basically everything you could feasibly need here. Uh, it, again, just a little more central. You have more amenities uh, to, to choose from. So again, for reference, West Edmonton Mall. We're getting a little further away. It's a 12 minute drive. Honestly, the West End's pretty easy to get around once you're there. Um, so it's kind of consistent drive times. Um, to go downtown from Grosvenor, I mean, 12 minute drive. Uh, arena is just a bit beyond, like just up, like here. Um, yeah, I mean, nice and close to downtown. Easy drive, easy commute if you're going to be working there. U of A is still pretty accessible because we have what's called Groat Road. It's kind of a funny looking road here uh, that connects for to uh, downtown. So easy, easy to U of A. Uh, you're looking at a seven minute drive here still. So yeah, this is probably one of the better, more central locations um, for West End that's still in a moderately affordable price range. Um, slightly older homes would be the drawback. Now. Nope. Uh, 35 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, because you're more central, you're a little further from the freeways being the Hende and the White Mud. So uh, a little bit longer to get out to the airport for sure. Okay, so there you have it. There's our little tour of West Edmonton to show you a few different communities. Um, again, like I said, these are not the only communities to live in. I just wanted to pick a few different areas to kind of give you a general feel of what we're gonna what you can get in what area what amenities are around you so hopefully this was helpful to you um, again if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, I'd love to help you find a home if you're someone considering moving to Edmonton if you're considering the West End you know I mean this is I, I'm a born and raised Edmontonian and the West End is where I grew up I know it like the back of my hand I'd love to help you find your home here uh, again please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions uh, if you have any uh, particular uh, you need advice on any particular communities you're curious about an area or a community or a neighborhood or maybe if you're not sure you're more you know what you need but you don't know where to find it let me know and i'll find it for you uh and yeah so uh without further ado that's all for today again i'm thomas harrington you can reach me at thomasharrington.ca i'm gonna have a link down below where you can download my home buyer's guide if you're considering buying a home in the edmonton area and you can head over to my home search website, westedmontonliving.ca, and uh, you can start your home search there. There's a few easy searches to find your way around the West End. Until next time, cheers.